Good morning and welcome to this week's episode of ECC Essentials. I will give it just a second as you guys start to filter in. Um, as always, thank you to those who are attending live. Thank you to those who are watching or listening to the recording. Uh, we once again will have a jam-packed session, I'm sure. Um, the 30 minutes always go so quickly, uh, but for anybody this is your first time, this is ECC Essentials, where we really focus on things happening in the center or related to those of us who are in the center uh, by the Denise Amberley Foundation. Um, if you are not familiar with the foundation, uh, please visit deniseamberley.org to learn more. Um, but I definitely want to get going. Feel free for those of you watching live to say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, but we have Tim Shaw here this morning, and so I will let him introduce himself and then just jump right into talking about AI and how it can really be beneficial for us in dispatch. Thanks, Hal. I want to wish everybody a good morning. My name is Tim Shaw, and I'm the president of Smart Response Technologies. I come from a uh, law enforcement background. Uh, I was a former FBI agent, and uh, prior to that, I was in the Marine Corps and was one of the co-founders here with Smart Response Technologies. So. I want to talk about AI. I know it scares a lot of people, and I know it. Uh, a lot of people seem to think it's going to replace the call dispatcher. And I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen. And we're going to go through and tell you why. So these are the discussion topics that we'll have for today. The importance of human intuition in answering 911 calls and dispatching. The ability for dispatchers and call takers to recognize caller emotion, volume, and clarity. Uh, benefits to you of seeing what's heard and what your what your radio ears is is improving, and then maintaining that quality assurance and training. So we're going to get started here. And and human intuition, uh, you know, I I love these quotes, and I think that intuition is something that people overlook, but in the jobs as call takers and dispatchers, your intuition is saving a lot of lives and making a lot of good calls out there. And that's what's important here. So definition of human intuition by Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. I'm not going to read it to you. I'll allow you the time to do it. But the, the bottom line is it's quick and ready insight that we develop over the years by what we do in life and the training and the knowledge that we gain. So most people don't understand, but intuition is not logical. If someone asks you to explain why you made that decision and you just look at them and say it was a gut instinct, that's intuition. And that has, I, I will tell you, as an 18-year SWAT agent with the FBI and as a SWAT agent on the street, intuition and gut instinct has saved me a lot of time and may have saved my life once or twice by not going around that corner or not doing something. So no one really knows what it's about, but we all know what it is. So here's one of the things that I want you to understand. True AI has to perform three things before it can operate. They have to have learning, they have to have reasoning, and they have to have predicting on their own. AI cannot provide you with a true understanding of, of what that call is all about, what that emotion is on the other end of that call, what that emotion is on the other end of that radio. It can't do that in situations like human. So if you look at the left side of the screen, AI is not going to be able to, to tell by the voice on the other end of the call or the radio of what's going on. So there, there's some ambiguity in there, and there is some, some interpretation that you as call takers and dispatchers have to have. I love this chart because we know a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge, and we know a lot more people that have maybe not as much book knowledge but a lot of experience. And what I like about this chart is experience connects the dots. And an experienced call taker or dispatcher or one that's doing both can differentiate that caller on the other end, their emotion, their volume, their panic. AI is not going to do that. AI is a machine. So this is what I want you to understand that AI as a concept is going to be a tool to dispatchers. It's not going to replace you. Now, that being said, I know there's some larger call centers that are the non-emergency calls. They're using AI to interpret and answer those calls. I'm not a big fan of that, but 
And then again, at my age, technology, I'm not a big fan of a lot of it. But here's the thing. How many of you gotten a, made a call to a company for help and you get a machine on the other end and you're trying to explain and you just can't do it? That's frustrating. So keep that in mind as we go through this. One of the things... Have, go ahead. Sorry, Tim. I was going to say, one of the things having conversation about that recently too is I think when we think AI and calling in, we think of those customer service ones where we're like representative, representative, and it just won't give us. Um, and so that's what our mind goes to. And we think, how can that be helpful? Not recognizing that although it's a similar service, anything that, you know, kind of we use in dispatch, it might be similar to other things, but it's intended for dispatch. So when you have like an answering service, it's not going to be the same as a giant company trying to reduce the amount of like human Correct. humans they have to be. Ours is just more of a filter and to help efficiency. Um, but I think part of the reason we struggle sometimes is because we can think of that huge corporation and how they're using AI. Yep. And, and, and I think the, the, the uniqueness of this is you guys are, and a lot of people forget this, you guys are the first of the first responders. And I, I, I know I'm not being politically correct when I use the term you guys, but I'm old and that's the way I refer to a group of people. But you are the first person that that person that's having an, a dramatic experience, a, a chaotic situation, or a first responder that's involved in something that may be life-threatening on their end, you're the first person that gets to hear that. You're the one that your prior knowledge, your experience, you're making the decisions you need to go out there and help the community, help the first responder get through that. Um, you know, I, I always use the example, when fire responds to a fire, there's certain steps they go through just about every time. You know, first on scene does this, second on scene does that. And, and my son's a firefighter and I don't, don't begrudge that. But on the law enforcement side, you may dispatch it as a, as a barking dog and get there and it's a domestic violence situation. It's very so dynamic. It's very evolving and without knowing the emotion and the clarity of the call, but most of all, the volume in that, that person's voice going up or down, you guys have to be able to be subjective and give some perspective to that person on the other end that, okay, yes, this happened. Take a deep breath. We'll get you through it. You know, you got to talk them down. It might be the same way on the other end for that first responder. Um, you know, when, when you have someone that that's been involved or been shot at, it tends to elevate the the stress level and you got to you got to help them out. You got to have them take a deep breath. You got to take care of that. Um, you know, common sense and intuition together is the most valuable tool that a dispatch center can bring to the table. Common sense, I've always said, and, and it's it's becoming more clearer as as time goes on in this country. Common sense is an uncommon virtue, but common sense is in every dispatch center because you have to, you have to be able to take those calls. You have to be able to separate what's going on. And you do that very well because it's based on your experience, your intuition, and most of all, that common sense that you bring to the table. Okay. Common sense is instinct and it's enough of it is genius. You know, you can be as book smart as you want. But without common sense, you can be dumb as a rock with that book smart. You have to be able to apply it. And, and dispatchers are very smart people. And that comes from having common sense and instinctive uh, reactions mm -hmm. to calls over the years. And you pass that on to the new dispatchers. And that's what's important. So, you know, we all know we're facing a, a shortage here in the country. So we need to, we need to, Keep working with those young folks. And, and I'm going to talk about some ways that AI can help with that. But we have to remember those young folks, they grew up with a smartphone, with a laptop, with an iPad. Okay. So we need to incorporate that into their training and incorporate that into their quality assurance as, and give them positive feedback. Here's something that I want to make sure everybody on this call understands, and that's this. AI cannot do the eth ethical and cultural context of a call. AI cannot make ethical decisions. Take the most recent example out there with Google's genius. I think it was our Genesis that they built it wrong. Whatever you put into your AI model is what you're going to get out. You know, the old garbage in, garbage out. 
how do you train an AI model to have ethics based on information that's dynamic and evolving? You can't. But you have the ability to do that ethical reasoning and most of all, make moral judgments on those calls. You do it every day. You do it every minute of the, of the day. And so everything you see on the right side of, the, of that slide, you do subconsciously without really thinking about it because of the way you're trained. Most of all, because of the quality of individuals that sit in dispatch centers because they, they're reliable, they're trustworthy, and the community depends on you. So AI can't do that. AI can't make a judgment or a moral decision unless you train it with the right data. If you have all that data and you come around to, to do that, it's going to cost a bundle because it takes data and data and data. So understand that what you're doing, AI is never going to replace. Never. At least not in my lifetime. And I don't have, I'm a lot young, I'm a lot older than Halcyon, but I even think in Halcyon's lifetime, AI is not going to replace a dispatcher. I don't think so. I would agree with that. Yeah. So the other thing that AI can't do is it can't collaborate like you do in a dispatch center. You may have a unique call going on or something going on. And if you're fortunate enough to have other dispatchers or call takers there, you get that collective intelligence of the group. You get that social interaction while you're sitting there. AI is a machine. It's it's not going to, to be able to collaborate with you like you want, okay? Think about the creativity you get on certain calls and think about feedback that people give you after those calls about what you did right. And I always, after every SWAT mission, we would do what we called a, a backroom closed door session. I wasn't a team leader anymore. Nobody had rank. And we sat there and we debriefed. What'd you do right? What'd you do wrong? And that's how you get better. And that's how you build that collective intelligence, that's how you build collaboration, and that's how you build a teamwork. An AI system cannot fully replicate a collaborative and dynamic nature of human creative processes because it's a machine thinking. Our brains work a lot faster. Our brains have a lot more experience and knowledge in there. And that gut instinct that's not an AI comes into play. So I think you're getting the point here. And the point is, you guys are important and AI is not going to replace you, okay? So here's what AI can do for you. AI can be become a tool for you folks to be better at the already good job that you're doing. You can be a dispatcher's friend in that if you see what you're hearing, the Air Force Research Lab out here in Ohio did a blind, double blind study in air traffic control centers or air combat centers, air, air combat control centers with air combat controllers who are air combat control centers are hearing four or five different air combat controllers doing missions. Do I have permission to go hot? Do I have permission to drop, engage, whatever? By seeing and hearing the transcript, they proved it was a 70% increase in comprehension just by those two things in front of you. So imagine, you know, I, I look at Halcyon because I, I respect her so much. She answers the phone and she dispatches. And then you got to type in the CAD. And then you got to listen to the call and you got to do all that. Imagine if you could increase your comprehension by 70%, how much better you would be able to serve that first responder going out there. You're giving them accurate data, right? So helpful. Yeah. So helpful. You know, my, my biggest fear is when someone gets busy and a number gets transposed on an address or whatever, and it either delays the response or as sadly as we've seen, they respond, to, the police respond to the wrong house and there's a shooting because the homeowner didn't, they didn't have lights or whatever. I don't want to happen. That's an error. That's a human mistake. We all make them and I'm not blaming anybody other than the fact that, you know, the most recent 2023 job statistics, 911 dispatchers and call takers is the eighth most strenuous job in the United States. Think about all the jobs you think that are strenuous and you're coming in at number eight. That's pretty amazing, okay? So the transcription in front of you with keyword alerting, that helps you comprehend even more, okay? We can identify keywords through transcription, AI can identify those keywords. 
What we're looking at with AI is to prevent miscommunication and most of all, missing a communication. You know, I, I had a young man that's a dispatcher out in Colorado that said, there's two things that make him stress out and work. One, on the fire side, they like to have the date time the incident started and date time it stopped and everything in between. Now he didn't have to worry about missing that. He can go back and look. And the second thing he he really stressed about was that traffic stop at night. When that officer stops that vehicle at night, we all know traffic stops are getting more and more dangerous. You don't know what is behind the wheel. He doesn't have to call that disp that that officer back and say, what was the license plate? Taking their eyes off the driver to look at the license plates again. He can go back and look at it right in the transcription. So we're ensuring officer safety at that point. Okay. AI can also be used to alert supervisors, other leadership in critical incidents. Again, I'm going to use Halcyon, who's who's on the phone with the the nine the nine one one caller dispatching that, and now she has to notify a supervisor or someone else that a critical incident is going on. She's got a lot of experience. I'm sure she can do it very well. But if a system, an AI system, can identify a keyword that would cause that call to go out or that alert to go out over a smart device, it allows her to stay focused on the event. It allows her to stay focused on the caller, make sure the first responders are getting the, the data and the intelligence they need to make that call. And it just provides for an overall better situation for everybody that's involved. So AI is allowed to do that. And, and that's something that, that really needs to, to come into play. Quality and assurance. I think, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and I think it that example and the other AI that's out there, it is such like that's exactly what it is, right? It's just another tool for us to provide, you know, not only like the information and and like you said, we do better when we hear and see. But even just that reassurance that, you know, almost like a second set of eyes or ears on something where am I perfect? No. Is that always going to be perfect? No. But when we have two things that, you know, we're working towards together and it's a tool we can use, there's probably going to be improved outcomes because at least, you know, we have something else that just the reassurance and like the confidence, if you will, that we've got something right. We've got that information. Yep. And, and, you know, when it comes to quality assurance, you know, AI can provide you the call handling quality assurance by you can put whatever keywords in there. You want to make sure that the, the call taker is getting, you can, you can provide the QA almost immediately to the dispatcher, to the call taker, because they can see whether they missed something or not, or misunderstood it, or just didn't hear it. You know, one of the things in, in 911 calls is you get that call that says, my partner is, is upset, he's throwing things around the house, he's being violent, and then you go into your, your domestic violence call list, is there weapons in the house? Yes, there's weapons in the house. Yes, he can have access to them. And you start putting that information out, and while you're doing that, you get, and he's been off his meds for three weeks. That's kind of a key important thing that you want to give to those first responders because now they can go in in a different situation and they can under, you can understand that that person needs their meds, right? Or you can just, you can deescalate the situation. I'm not saying it was your fault you missed it or you may hear it and not realize you heard it, but meds could be a key word in there that would allow you to have a good quality call and give quality information to the first responders. There's... There's other ways that AI can assist, like Halcyon said, there's a lot of products out there. I would, I would say that you need to look at the products and find out what that AI model is built upon and what are they using to train that AI model, okay? At, at Smart Response, we have a very small black box that we use because we train on radio traffic. That's it. Not radio traffic uh, other than... 911 dispatch center radio traffic. Okay. Now you can get probably the same thing at AWS or, or, you know, any other of the big ones, but they use conversational language. And we all know there's a difference between what's being said on the radio and what's being said in a conversation. 
Well, and that's such a huge thing, whether it's AI or any program you're looking for. I think there's some that maybe aren't like marketed for dispatch that will work and they're great. Um, but also when you're looking into any kind of tool for your people, for the center, is that due diligence of what what does this look like for us specifically? Like you mentioned, you know, what kind of, are they using the conversational? Are they using more of focused on the 911? Um, and so also too, as we talk about this, just with any tool that you're gonna bring into your center, do that due diligence of really knowing what all it offers, what needs it's meeting um, and making sure that aligns with what you need and that it's gonna work well with what you need it for. Outstanding point. I would recommend that if someone says they're going to transcribe something for you, ask them what they're using. If they're using AWS, there's going to be a, a cost to that because they charge by the second. Um, what are they using to train the model with? Are they just taking conversation, whatever? But make sure you ask that because that's going to that's going to help the quality of, and cost of what you're getting. So here's the other thing that I, I brought up earlier about new dispatchers. They've had smart devices and computers their whole lives. It can benefit them to be able to have uh, AI help them do transcription to help them gain that radio ear. There's nothing more frustrating than when a center goes out, spends the money to train a dispatcher, and they get frustrated because they can't, they can't get the radio and they walk away. This may be a way to keep some of those folks you're hiring there good because they're seeing that there's a tool that can help them. Not a crutch, but a tool. We have one, one customer that, that uses this for about the first three or four weeks. All they could do is listen to the radio, right? And we all, we all love the old method. No, you got to sit there and listen and listen, but frustration goes up as you, as you get uh, toward the not being able to understand that radio year. What it can do is, is they allow them to see the transcription, but not play it back. So now they're, they're unique words that they were having. Now they're starting to pick them up and train their ear better. Okay. And so I, I love this, this picture on here because you train to grow. All right. You start out and, and until you train, you're not going to be at, at the height of your, your career. And we all know it's not easy to get the radio ear. I'm sure I, I'm sure I could ask everybody here how much frustration they had at the beginning because public safety is a unique language, 10 codes, other codes that people use, you gotta learn them. So it, it's, it's a tool to help gain that radio ear a little bit faster. And the other thing is now, if you have a certain word that, they're having problems with and let's say you go in and search the system for that word for their 12 hour shift it came up 10 times they got it seven out of 10 times that day you know that's positive feedback that you can give them hey you're getting better and when you started this you were only getting one or two out of 10 now you're getting seven so that gives them confidence and and they need that confidence to to be able to sit there and work through the stress that you guys go through every day um it gives you positive feedback and this is something I learned in the Marine Corps three times to praise an employee. And, and it's always true. You praise that employee that always, that goes above and beyond the job requirements. All it, you know, always there, does it. You also need to praise that employee that is the steady Eddie, the one that does the, everything they need to do every day. If they don't go above, they don't go below. They're just steady. You can rely on them. And then that third one is, when that individual finally reaches that appropriate level they should be at, you got to praise them for that. Because if you do of all three of these, now you're setting your team up that everybody's getting praise and always, but always give constructive criticism to them, you know, and then the old adage, you praise in public and you criticize in private. And, and what's nice about having our transcription in front of you, you don't have to sit there at the console with them looking over their shoulder. You can sit at your desk and see it and, and track what's going on. So it's it's important that we understand that AI can be an exceptional tool and AI can really, really help things. Um, you know, this is Mark Cuban and I couldn't agree more. When it's mixed with human skills in a dispatch center, wow, think about how you can advance the quality of, of your dispatching calls and calls that you get on the phones. It's huge. And then, just, go ahead. 
sorry. And it, it just is to lighten the load. It's not like you said, it's the mix of the human skills and the AI. It's not to replace or anything, but it just increases that efficiency because now if I can not worry about a certain task that doesn't require the intuition, the, you know, recognizing emotions and those kinds of things, and I can then use my focus, um, I'm uh, coming to you live from the Missouri Public Safety Communications Conference. Um, and yesterday, you know, my training session, anybody who's been in it um, has probably heard me talk about your brain runs on energy. Like energy is the currency for your brain and your brain is very expensive. And that's why we get so exhausted when we have to think a lot is because our brain is, is expensive with that currency of energy. And so this stuff is something to reduce that cost in a way. Right. So I'm I'm looking at at some of the chat here, and and there was a question about how accurate is the language translation for slang words. I can talk about SRT if you don't mind, I'll down. I'll talk about our part, but we train um, on your radio calls in our system. You, if there's a word that's incorrect, you can go ahead and correct it. It'll flag us, and then we go back and train train the engine. Slang words are not an issue. Um, we actually just completed the study with Salem, Virginia Dispatch Center, where they took two mumblers. I always get asked, how's this with mumblers? What they did is they took two mumblers, they brought them in and let them listen to their radio about how bad it really was. And then for two months, they, they consciously did this. They went back, one increased into the 80s percent accurate, just themselves, and the other one increased into the mid 80s. Um, and, and so they're, they're maintaining that. So we can help with that. Again, it goes back to training. It's not just dispatchers that need to be trained. You got police officers that are on the radio all the time compared to firefighters. I, I look at firefighters are proper English and police officers are slang. That's just the way it goes. Cause they're on all the time and they like to lean over and eat that mic and so forth. Um, Joseph, is it Joseph? Is that who I'm looking at that asked that question? Josephine. Josephine. I'm sorry. I apologize. Josephine. Um, when we do uh, firefighters that are in SCBA, we train the model to understand that. I went down to my son's firehouse when he was a lieutenant and he put his crew on and they put their gear on with oxygen so we can understand the acoustics of that. So it's all about how you train the model. Again, ask how people are training that model. So there, I just, on my personal Facebook, I posted something that was like, you know, they say, computers, AI will be as smart as people. And it's like, okay, but which people, <laughs> because it's also kind of true. And it just reminds me for any of the tools that utilize the AI, it, to an extent, it's what is put in is how well it has come out. And again, goes back to that, like doing your research when you're looking at vendors, whether it's for transcribing or answering services, or even training stuff that might utilize it of where do they get their information? What's being put in? And then how, you know, how will that then benefit the center? Um, Absolutely. Because it's it's that back end stuff. It's, you know, are they just having any kind of, you know, transcription or anything where they have to look, recognize terms? You know, are they having someone just sit here and read into a mic nice and easy? Or are they having with a mask and mumbling and, you know, that kind of way? Um, it just is what what is the provider, the company, whoever it is putting into it, I think is also something to really be aware of when you're looking at that stuff. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I encourage you to ask those questions. And and I know we're running short on time. And I want to thank you, Halcyon, and, and the foundation for allowing me to come on to the webinar. I hope this enlightens mm -hmm. some folks that AI is a tool. We're not going to replace dispatchers. And I thank you all for the job you do and keeping us in the community safe. Yes. Um, yeah, no, that really snuck by. Um, as usual, though, so much good information. And even just, I hope for those of you watching or watching the replay of even just kind of like dipping your toe into all of this, because it is a lot and there's a lot of different uses and things people talk about. And it's kind of a hot topic right now, but isn't always explained or we're always not quite sure what that looks like. Um, so thank you, Tim, for being here and going through that um, 
as always, this will um, be up on our YouTube channel. Um, with traveling, I am a bit behind. Uh, so I appreciate everyone's patience getting those recordings up on there, um, but it will be so that way you guys have easy access to the replay. Um, and we will be back, I think, um, may be taking a break. I should have looked before I did that, um, but in a few weeks to talk about the next topic. So if you are not on, um, not following our Facebook page, highly encourage that as well as LinkedIn. Um, you can also go to our website to sign up for our email newsletter. Uh, so with that, I will let you guys get back to your day. Thank you again, Tim. Um, probably potentially have different conversations in the future too, to go a little bit further. Um, but this was all such good information and we will see you guys next time. Thanks everybody.